Hey everyone, and welcome back to Dev Parkour. In this video, I want to talk about why I'm going to start using Rust for a lot more things and why maybe you should too. So, real quick, uh, before we get into the meat of it, uh, I've been looking for a new programming language. Uh, now, I there used to be a time where I would just go learn a new programming language just to learn a new programming language. Um, I don't have nearly as much time as I used to have anymore, uh, so I don't really have that luxury. I'm not going to go just learn a new programming language just because it exists. Um, but in the last several months, in, actually in the last couple of years, I've been uh, feeling like there was something missing from the programming languages that I tended to use. Um, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that my background is as a C-sharp developer. I've been using C-sharp for probably a decade at this point. Uh, C-sharp has been more or less my primary language for, for a long time. Um, but there were some aspects of it that kind of left me, you know, wanting something else. Uh, it felt like the, it, it left something to be desired. Um, a, a lot of, especially my side projects now, are kind of system level things, or even, you know, desktop development. Um, and especially on, you know, potentially even resource star starved environments. Not necessarily uh, things like Raspberry Pi or something like that, but things like Docker containers where, you know, I would, I would prefer to uh, use the resources as responsibly as possible. You know, I don't, I don't want my stuff to be compared to, you know, the Java apps of the world where you spin them up and immediately they're using half a gig of RAM. You know, that's not where I want to be. So I had a few specific things that I was looking for uh, from, a, from a programming language. Uh, normally, my go-to for that sort of thing would have been C or C++, but there are some things that make C and C++ kind of unwieldy, right? It's difficult to, uh, well, the, the, the package ecosystem it doesn't really exist, right? It's either DLLs or shared objects. It's a lot easier on, on Linux systems than it is on, on Windows systems. But even still, if you're trying to go across platform, now you're managing two different uh, mechanisms for handling dependencies. That's a little bit frustrating. And then neither of them are really mo what I would consider modern languages. Um, it's very easy to get into segmentation fault land. It's very easy to uh, get into uh, frustrations in dealing with objects and strings especially. Right? Strings are something that we definitely take for granted in modern programming languages. And C and C++, while they do have a concept of strings, uh, they're a little bit more difficult than you know we're used to dealing with, especially coming from a background like C-sharp. Uh, so a couple weeks ago, um, maybe last week or something like that, I put a poll on LinkedIn and I asked, what's the go-to compiled language of the future? And this is what I got uh, for my results. Uh, now, I was actually kind of surprised at how close the results were, especially initially. Uh, and then Rust and C-sharp pulled ahead. Um, I, I, I'm not putting too much weight on the fact that C-sharp actually won out over Rust uh, in this poll, mainly because most of my network, I, I think, is C-sharp developers. I think it's heavily skewed in the direction of C-sharp um, because... Uh, uh, you know, of my, my career history. I've worked at a lot of C-sharp jobs. So I think that's why uh, that came out. But Rust was the number two. And Rust really spoke to me. And I was kind of, you know, looking for validation that by picking Rust, I was, I was going in the right direction. So Rust is probably going to be my compiled language, go-to compiled language of the future. Um, and the reasons that uh, that I'm going that direction is th there are a few of them. One, it is modern, uh, and what I mean mean by modern is that uh, there are a, a you know a, a class of of problems. The the null issue is a big one. Um, that newer languages uh, specifically try to build safeguards into the language uh, as opposed to having error checking to handle them. So older languages like Java and uh, 
No, Java is the one that really made it popular. The null pointer exception, right? Really a null reference exception. Um, that's, you know, that's kind of a, a, a way of life in Java and even in C-sharp. Um, C-sharp is a little bit more modern in, you know, they are making strides uh, to, to um, make it less likely that you'll run into a null, null reference exception, null pointer exception, that sort of thing. Uh, but it, the, the possibility is still there. But newer languages like Swift and Kotlin and Rust uh, and Go are actually have things built into the language. Like the language syntax is designed so that uh, you could be very explicit about am I expecting null here? Am I not expecting null here? Is this a thing where, uh, where null is not possible? Um, and, and have safeguards built into author time and compile time as opposed to runtime checks for null. Next up, my, my go-to language had to be compiled. There was no question about that. Um, the reason it has to be compiled is that for the things that I'm doing, I do not want to ship a runtime, uh, I, or I don't want to require a runtime. Um, I, you know, I'm okay with, with C Sharp and the .NET runtime. That's fine because you pretty much can't run a Windows machine without the .NET runtime at this point. So I don't have to worry too much about that runtime existing. I'm considering that, you know, uh, compiled for all intents and purposes, especially since there are ways to, uh, to get around that. You can run self-contained C Sharp apps with, with .NET Core and .NET 5. You can ship applications that, yes, are larger inside but it's your executable and the runtime bundled together. So no one has to install anything, anything else. And that also works for Mac OS and Linux. Uh, so C Sharp definitely is a contender on that front. Um, but Rust is compiled uh, and it links with, you know, whatever you need it to uh, at, at build time. And then you can ship that, that executable around. Um, I feel, this is kind of a personal opinion sort of thing, but I feel like compiled uh, executables, you know, because they're a single thing, you know, bundled together, one one file, they just feel a little bit cleaner to distribute than, uh, you know, even a, a, a zip file of additional, you know, script files or something like that, right? And that's why, like, things like Python and Ruby, you know, while, while good languages for their appropriate uses, didn't really fit the bill for what for what I was looking at. Next up, one that's huge for me uh, is strongly typed. Um, I'm a huge fan of strong typing. Uh, in my opinion, it, it it it's it's another case of uh, you know in the more modern languages, effectively eliminating an entire class of uh, of of uh, bugs that you could write. Uh, so in something like JavaScript or Ruby or PHP or something like that, you might have to write tests to ensure that uh, if I pass something into a function that is not the type that it's expecting, it does something reasonable or, you know, otherwise have testing around uh, parts of code to make sure that, uh, that I, I, I'm, I'm using it in, in the way that I intended. Whereas with strong typing, I know at compile time, I know that I'm using a function the way it's supposed to be used, passing in the proper type, that sort of thing. Uh, and that's really big for me. That's why I use TypeScript when I write JavaScript, because I want that strong typing. And TypeScript actually, I, I feel like uh, kind of, uh, um, it spoiled me. Um, the TypeScript typing system is fantastic. It is amazing. I could go on and on about how awesome it is. Um, there are things in there that I wish C Sharp had. Uh, there are things in there that I think F Sharp has that I wish C Sharp would just kind of pull across and make easier to use. Because um, I don't want to go over to F Sharp fully necessarily. Um, but the TypeScript type system ha has a lot of powerful constructs in it. And so, you know, my go to language had to have a powerful type system, which Rust has. I don't think it's quite to the to the level that TypeScript is, um, just to be able to support some of the things that, that Rust has as, as first class language features. Um, but it's pretty darn close. 
I, I've only been using Rust for a few weeks now, and uh, I found it able to express the types uh, that, I, that I've needed it to so far. So I'm excited about uh, kind of pushing the limits there and seeing just how far I can go. Um, but the Rust typing system is, is pretty fantastic. Next up, uh, and this is this is kind of my my background showing through uh, a combination of imperative and functional. Now you'll notice I didn't put object oriented there. Uh, I did I did think about how I wanted to describe this, and while C sharp is definitely an object oriented programming language, Java definitely an object oriented programming language. Um, object orientedness isn't really as important for me uh, as some of the concepts are, you know, I, 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 I don't mind, you know, inheritance, encapsulation, polymorphism. Those are all great things, but I don't necessarily need them for what I'm doing. But what I do need, uh, and this is I, probably just because of the way I approach problems and the way I think about problems, is I need kind of an imperative wrapper. This happens first, and then this happens, and then this happens. But when I want to, I, I want to be able to jump into a functional paradigm so that I can compose functions into larger functions um, and, and take advantage of some of the, the power and expressiveness that uh, things like um, functional programming, you know, F sharp, TypeScript, those sorts of things uh, really provide. So that was important to me. And Rust has that. Rust very specifically uh, includes functional aspects on top of the, the imperative base. So that was awesome. And then something that I called structured. Um, and this is this one might be a little bit more difficult to define, uh, but I can say that Rust definitely has this. So structured is like, in one sense, object-oriented light. So the ability to create structures and then uh, associate methods and functions with that, which Rust has. Go has that, uh, obviously, true object-oriented programming languages like C-sharp and Java have that as well. Um, but I do want some way to express, you know, complex data types, you know, structures, uh, and, and Rust obviously has that. Uh, and that, that works very well hand-in-hand -hand with the imperative and functional nature because uh, it enables me to, to work with more complex data structures. The next thing on my list is probably one of the hardest things to find uh, in any of these languages, and that is C++ interop, and not just C interop. Uh, lots of languages have C interop. C interop is super simple um, because uh, you basically have the name of a method, and it's very easy to translate the name of a method uh, into an address inside of a shared object or a DLL or something like that. Super simple to do that. C++ makes it more complicated because of something called name mangling. And if you're, you're a C++ developer and you've been a C++ developer for a while, you know what name mangling is, you've seen it. Um, it's ugly, it's in some cases compiler uh, dependent, uh, and uh, it can be a little bit frustrating. So uh, C++ interop usually doesn't exist in a lot of these languages. The usual way you go about doing this is you build a C style wrapper around your C++, and then you're point, passing around uh, a void, plat, void splat, you know, void pointers, uh, which is basically an untyped thing. So now you just went from strongly typed language to completely untyped to C, C++, who knows, it's the Wild West. Rust, this isn't really a native Rust feature, this is actually a crate, it's a package, uh, but there is a package that provides C++ interop from Rust. So I haven't used that yet, but I'm really, really excited to actually get my hands on that and try it out. Next up is opinionated, but not to a fault. So for me, this kind of eliminated Go, because Go is highly opinionated, and in some cases, Go's a opinionated nature just kind of gets in the way of the developer experience. Rust, on the other hand, is very opinionated about the things that it need to, needs to be opinionated about. So the way it handles uh, errors uh, through the, the result construct, um, 
the way that uh, crates work and the way that files interact uh, between each other, um, the way that modules are, are, are set up. Those are all kind of inherent to the language and need, you need to, be, need to have strong opinions about that. But then everything else is kind of up to you. Uh, they're, they're in, in, so far, in my experience, which granted has been like a month, um, there isn't a whole lot uh, where it prevents me from, from achieving the developer experience that I want. Uh, I found it very easy to, to get started in, get where I need to go. I can make progress, you know, if I only spend half an hour on the project that I'm using Rust for, I can still get a, a good chunk of the way down the road. I'm not fighting with the language. I don't find myself fighting with its opinions and its conventions um, just in order to get something something accomplished, which I, I, I can definitely say um, isn't the case for all the languages that I've, that I've used. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it. That's actually the end of my list. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm using Rust. Rust is what I found to be, it, it fits everything on that list. Um, and I'm very impressed with the language. Uh, it's still uh, a newer language, so it's not necessarily fully mature. It's not immature either. It's, it's very mature, but it's not nearly as mature as C, C, C Sharp, Java, C++, you know, that sort of thing. Um, just because it hasn't been around a while. But I'm very excited about Rust. Like I said, I'm using it for a project. Uh, you'll see more about that later in the week. Um, but I'm really excited about Rust. I think Rust is a great language. I think you should use it too. It's definitely worth learning. Uh, if you would like me to, um, you, you'll you'll see the project that I'm, I'm using it for later. Um, but if you want me to do a deeper dive into Rust and my experiences learning Rust, maybe similar to what I did uh, for Go. I, you know, I, I learned Go and uh, wrote a, a little little app in Go a while back. Uh, if you want to see that, go ahead and leave a comment down below uh, and, and ask me to do that. If you have questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments down below. Be sure to click that thumbs up button, uh, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell so you'll be notified when I talk more about Rust and you know more about programming languages. Thanks for watching and I will see you tomorrow.